Um, hey, I'm gonna be painting a little bit, so you can peek over my shoulder and see how it goes. Okay, let's give it a shot. First off, I've got a little 8x10 um, canvas up, it's a canvas board, and you can choose whatever you'd like to paint on. This is probably a little bit small. You might want to use something larger. Uh, this is what I had on hand. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and get started. Uh, let's see, what am I painting? I'm either painting aspens <laughs> using a lot of yellow or doing a bird bath and some other things. I wonder how abstract I'm going to go. Uh, let's, let's see. Okay, well, usually I'd be out doing something in the open air, but since this is a test, I'm gonna do it on my porch, and I should probably set something up, but I'm gonna try to do it from a, a, a photograph. We'll see how it works. So, bear with me. So, first off, I just want to take, um, to get the, the outlines set up. And usually I'll just get a brown and a blue, cerulean, well, cobalt blue, burn umber. Mix them together, you get sort of a dark. And then I'm going to figure out, you know, some people try to figure the dimensions, like, okay, let's set up some markers so I can tell halfway up and halfway down how to, to lay out this image. And by looking at this, I've got a, uh, a little bird bath in this sort of an area. I'm not going to be exact. I'm going to just get it roughly into, in place. I'm really interested just in the relationships of things. And I'm not doing a terribly brilliant job at the moment, but we'll give it a shot. And so we have our big, beautiful sagebrush going up like this. And I should probably be a little bit more specific with the, the outline of it. And we have some other elements some white flowers in this general area. And I'm just gonna mark off those. And then there's some complexity. There's dark areas in the, in the sagebrush, which is about there and about there. And some dark areas down here. And really I'm looking for the dark areas first. I'm going to start off with sort of uh, looking at the tones. Uh, and if I do that, I can see in this area, there is a plenty of dark. It's dark green, but uh, right now I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to sort of block in those, those areas. Uh, I'm trying to do this quickly. I should... Because really you want to move as quickly as possible in this area. And so I'm finding that there's a dark area for this bird bath and some dark areas below. I'll go ahead and, and put those in. And my brown isn't terribly dark, but it's just a, a placeholder for these things for now. And then, you know, behind this birdbath area, there's another very dark area in here. I'm just going to go ahead and get that generally in place. Other people really like to use the actual proper darks in those spaces, and that's fine, that's good. It's actually pretty helpful. And I'm finding some dark areas down here. I just want to recall and remember, remember where those areas are. So this is, you know, 
This is not much at the moment, but uh, let's go on to the next step. What we do is we move step by step from the darkest to the lightest. Uh, you can go the other way, but uh, in this application, we're going from the dark to the lights. So from here, we really want to start paying attention to how we're filling those uh, areas in. Uh, is it a, a cool dark? Is it a, is it a warm dark? And in this image, most of these are, are cool darks. So instead of going with the warm burnt umber, um, burnt sienna, um, we'll move towards the uh, cerulean, or not cerulean, cobalt. Um, and let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I really want to focus on some of these cooler darks. I'll just put them in as cooler darks. Fantastic. And then we're going to sort of move up the scale. In the uh, sage over here, these really are probably more cool darts. And this is really sloppy. Really sloppy. But right now we're just having fun. And actually a lot of these abstract spaces uh, will really work for a benefit later on. And let's move in here. Now it's interesting, it's tricky. We have some darks and some lights together, but uh, let's not worry about that at the moment. We just want to keep that in mind. And let's see. Fantastic. So now I've got this some darks in. Let's go ahead and move into some of the darker green areas. Let's see if my greens are in an okay shape. Let's see. No, no, no. That's a very odd green. But rough, we're just going to rough them in right now. Really, it's going to be sort of a mess, and it might need to be more detailed than this. <sighs> Let's see if we can get a closer look at it as we're going, right? Depending on how your stuff is working, you might want to use a, a medium. Uh, I'm using a Galkid gel, uh, just because. I'll go into why I'm using it later. OK, let's go ahead and get back in here. And I need to use to refresh my greens. I'm using I'm using a uh, a sap green and a phalo green. Probably not the best to use, but um, it's what I have and. We'll just, we're just going to make it work, okay, people? Let's get this going. And I'm just moving and filling in these spaces. I'm not really a landscape painter, and I'm trying to just do this as an impression. I really want to be aware of the colors that you're working with, and when you put down an, a color, you do want it to be pretty much the right tone. Um, yeah. but for now, I'm being a bit of a slob. Just getting stuff done. Get it done, Enrico. Get it done quickly. You just want to fill in the areas pretty quickly and uh, move on from there. Can't always get it perfectly right. Eventually, you're going to get in there and get it really really working properly, but 
Don't waste your time being precise too often. Okay. I've got a warm yellow here. I really should be using cooler yellows. But for now we're going with pretty warm yellow. A cool yellow might be a lemon yellow. Um, I've got some... Okay, so it's very, very... It's not very specific, and I'm just sort of really mudging, smudging things in here. Um, one of the things that, uh, you would no that I would notice is that there's a, a darker, richer green here, and a, a bluer, uh, more washed out. Uh, green in the, the the background, and so specifically, we really we really need to focus on on that 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 difference. And the more types of greens that we use in uh, our painting, the more interesting it's going to be. So don't don't worry about using one perfect color. You're going to work your way into it. I do. Everyone paints differently. Everyone has different, different reason or purpose. Uh, and I am just trying to get this done before. So my battery goes out. Dear God! So oh, let's just get this in here. Again, I'm just working, looking at, at general areas of color, trying to get things in there pretty quickly. And what do I mean by general areas of color? I mean that. What would the scene look like if you had squished up your eyes? What would the scene really look like? We're looking for just general large areas of, of, of color. Edges are important to help us make sense of this later. actually pretty red for some reason even though it's also a bit cool so you have to learn to run the difference between things what's the most dominant feel that you've got with the particular the particular area just go with it go with it quickly a lot of other people are very safe and specific, and that's that's very good. It's very good. But those paintings take those paintings take hours. We are going for an impression. We are going for something that gives us a sense of the the space. For now, I'm not worried about. Perfection. We're not worried about 
bees sitting on, on leaves you care about. What this would look like to someone with terrible eyesight. Hey, if you're going blind, this is what this area looks like to you. And really, I should you. It's okay, so we're we're getting there. And you're saying. Enrico, I can't tell what that is. You don't have to right yet. You don't have to. We're just getting it started. Okay, so I'm getting into some areas that are well, let's just let's just fill as much in as we can. Let's try to be sort of accurate from here on in. Below here, there are some beautiful greens. Different than the rest. This is grass. And we're going to try to get as close to that grass color as possible. And it's a complex grass color. I'm not going to get it exactly necessary. Let's, we just need to rough it in. Get ourselves going. These complex greens. Mix your greens. And I wouldn't necessarily do all paintings just like this. Go ahead and we've got some interesting brownish, interesting pigment area. Nothing too unfortunate. Interesting purples in there. Roses too. Jump in there. Care about the tones, really. And by tones, I mean how dark or how light something it is. So you know, looking at it at the moment, it's a big smudge. That's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We will make it work. Don't be afraid. Throw yourself in there. Play. And you can depart. You can create what you like. So, okay, we've got the greens down, we've got the mid-tones, and pretty much everything's a mid-tone in this, in this painting, uh, except for a few highlights. And that's okay, that's okay. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We're back, <laughs> and uh, we're just going to keep painting a little bit, so I moved a little bit ahead, took a little break because I'm lazy as crap, and um, let's get it back in here and try to finish this up before my battery goes out, which may be very, very soon. Let's go painting crazy. Ooh, la, 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 la. Okay, where am I? So I'm gonna go ahead and put in these general areas of the yellow. And I have to put them in pretty thick. So I want to mix on my palette these colors so I can drop them in. Some people really like to use a palette knife. And you need to get your colors 
mixed just enough. Okay, so what do I mean by mixed just enough? Depends on the effect that you're going for. Pasto sort of uh, paint effect or feel. Uh, sometimes people use a palette knife, and impasto makes a lot. These thick brush strokes make a lot of sense for your foreground elements. Okay, so that's just some general yellows there. Uh, I need to take care of uh, my background greens, which are sort of roughly there. Uh, I'm going to clean off my really thick paint with a paper towel. Sometimes you go through a, sometimes you go through a lot of paper towels when you're doing this stuff. And let's continue. So my foreground yellows are a bit brighter, my background yellows are going to be a bit darker. So I can choose how to darken them, I can dark make them browner or cooler. As I put them in. And then I get a little bit more intense as I go higher in this backdrop. Again, I'm just suggesting that a little bit. Toning down the yellow that I use. Sometimes it's with white. And I really should be paying more attention to the shapes and general areas of these yellows. Again, I should be keeping staying a little cooler too. edges up here are very important. You interact with a different plane, different area. So we go from foreground-ish to medium ground to way background up here. And I'm using a pretty consistent brush stroke shape and size and I don't think that's right. Um, I may need to switch down to a different brush um, we'll see. And so I'm really just going for this sort of dappled look in the paint. Oh, still not focusing too much in on the details. I'm going to the background. Let's see if we can juice up the background a little bit. on the contrast of the uh, differentiation. Is it a lot 
lot of dark against light. There's a lot of light against dark. Or they close together. And you want to emulate that. Is it a crisp edge or a soft edge? Slowly that's beginning to work as we work the edges, as we work paint against paint, edge against edge, focusing on what's sharp and what's soft, the, uh, the, the image will come more into focus. So now we really have to start getting into very specific shapes, specific tones. And this is where the reality begins to, to, to show up. Oh, let's see if I can do this without embarrassing myself too much. I'm just going to put this in generally. It's on the outer edges of these, which is very a light edge. It's a real pleasure. Guess what? I don't have a lot of good brushes. <laughs> Focus in on some of these contrasts. Let's try to get these as well as we can. Looking for these very specific shapes. Finding areas of dark against light. Where are your darkest darks? Where are your lightest lights? And you'll notice that I'm not really using blacks. I'm using whites. The brown and the, the warm and the cool. To get my darks. So why would why would someone do that? Why would someone just use blue and brown? to make their darks. Uh, helps things be more harmonious. And it allows you to have a very complex black, complex dark, not just a, a very standard uh, dark. That's part of this. We need to focus in on a couple other pieces, and I think we're going to run out of battery. So uh, let's let's jump ahead. Oh, well, okay, that's uh, roughly our painting. Uh, hope you had a hope you enjoyed watching, and um, yeah, uh, thanks. I'll see you next time. We'll see if we can work this out a little bit clearer, and uh, you have a great day.